server, which the client is going to make a request to. Mm -hmm. Web server. So the web server will then point to some some API. Let's say API layer. And so this API layer will have different, you can think of them as microservices. And one of them will be, how do you say computes aggregate success rate? So one is calculate or say success rate API. We'll have a user failure or error. So error rate API. And we're going to have, we need something to count all the requests. So we're going to have some count requests API. Count requests. I guess I'll name it service instead of API. Service. These are a bunch of services. All right. And uh, application. All right. So I can imagine I'm going to put some, put another text in here. Because what we're going to be passing in as the data. So let's say the data format. So clearly we have some application ID because you have to know which of the oh, application. Oh, the, the, the data format. So each server that is running is returning the JSON that you can see in your sticky note. Yeah. Where the application ID is that application web app one, which yeah. could be your ID. Yeah. And to each of these services, you're going to want to say what application it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, each one will will tell you, hey, I'm web app one or web okay. app two. Yeah. From the API layer to all of these. But yeah, so you're going to have some client, makes a request to the web server, web server passes the request to the API layer. So essentially, this web server will just be like a reverse proxy because it will just need to know where to pass the request. All right, so the other reverse proxy goes to API layer. And then let me put the rest of the high level components. I'm going to need the actual database, of course. So I'll put DD here. And going back to your original question about the API latency. So we're going to need a cache in between to speed up for the API. Again, just putting high level, I'll jump into the individual components soon. So let me move this back. And let's say the API layer instead is going to call some calculate aggregate. Calculate yeah. aggregates. And then this will speak to each of those individual components. So put this there and this. To calculate the aggregate rate, you need to know the counts of the request. And then you need to calculate the success. And then you also need to calculate mm -hmm. the error. And then those okay. will pass those back to the calculate, which sends it to the API layer. So let's talk about the database. What kind of database are we going to be storing? So we can, the main choice is either SQL or NoSQL database that we want to choose between. Before we, we discuss about the storage, I'm curious about yeah. this. So if we, in this diagram, yeah. where do the 1,000 servers come into? Where are the uh, local, where do they come in, in in the diagram? So each application, we have a collection of 1,000 servers that are running web applications. Oh yeah, maybe right here. So, let, let so, me, API, so you yeah. have one thousand apps running. Yeah. They're preparing. They're preparing video for YouTube. They're, you know, processing it. Yeah. And then you want to know uh, over these one thousand uh, running nodes, uh, if let's say you have version one or version two, which one is more successful? Yeah. Or you want. Uh, so that's the, the part that I'm, I'm missing right now. And I want to answer exactly that question, right? Yeah. I want to say which version of the algorithm is more successful for, or is successful or what is the success rate for this algorithm or what is the success rate for this web app? Okay. So let me try and understand the question more deeply. So your question is, if we have a thousand servers running the web applications, we want to figure out the success rate of a particular algorithm? Oh, of a particular web app. So yeah. the algorithm is one example. But mm -hmm. you have 1,000 servers. Yeah. They're running different applications. Let's just call them web app 1, web app 2, web app 3. They could be different microservices. Yeah. They could be whatever. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, for, for example, web app 1 could have 153 instances distributed across this cluster. And the question is to compute the aggregate success rate. So I want a number that tells me for web app one, the success rate is 95%. Okay. And the success rate for one instance of the application is a success over request count. Across all of them, you just need to do the, the average across all servers. Does that make sense? Okay, so you have some requests that comes in, and that request is going to go, to, or different requests are going to go across the different thousand servers, and each server is yes, running. Yes, we, don't, own we don't really care about that yeah. web apps. Okay, I get what you're saying. So I imagine you have a cluster of the API servers, the web apps. Mm -hmm. 
in this case, and each web app is going to go and calculate its own aggregate rate service. And with each of those okay. calculations, we're going to store it in some database or some cache. And then okay. from the cache, okay. we can pull out what the, we can look at all the values to figure out the aggregate. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're saying that, just to make sure I understand. Yeah. So these, these API servers, these are, are 1,000 Yeah, exactly. Applications. So I stack and them on, yeah. You, you would, instead of having the endpoint that we have today, yeah. you would modify them to write the, the each, for each instance, they would write the success rate to the database. Yeah. Or it's stored and in the cache. Yeah. Yeah. And then how would you compute it across multiple instances? What do you say compute it across multiple instances? Could you clarify what you mean? So the, the aggregate you know, for for let's say web app one. Yeah. We have one hundred and fifty seven instances, one hundred and fifty seven copies of it. Yeah. Each copy will have a different number of request counts and a different uh, you know success count. And I want to know across all of these one hundred and fifty seven instances of the web app. What is the success rate? Meaning, what is the number of total success count over total request count? Okay, I get what you're saying now. So in that case, I'm so going to add. That's the part other. about the aggregate success. Yeah. Great. So in that case, I can add another service. Uh, I'll remove this. And then I connect. Yeah. So in that case, for each of the API servers that have all of their different instances and they calculate the aggregate rate service, then after I calculate all of those, it's going to get passed up to the service at the top, and this is going to, uh -huh. I guess, I don't want to say calculate or I guess compute. And you said it's the average that we want? Yeah, basically. I mean, that's one way you want to it. Average success rate service. Yeah, so we have all our API servers. And for each instance, it's going to calculate that aggregate rate service. And those are going to call individual microservices. That's going to pass the values back to the instance. And then all those values are going to go up to some separate service that's going to calculate the average across all of those values. OK. Yeah. And then. From there, let me see how we do structure program computer for a oh, thousand reasons amount of time. All right, so in the terms of reasonable amount of time, how can we make this faster? So like I mentioned, we can use the cache. And uh, let me think. Well, I guess I'm going to cache the average for the instance and then write through to the database. So for speeding up right in to disk, what we can do is we can split the database into, so I'll make it request count application. So because this is fairly simple and doesn't look like we're going to change it much, we could go for a SQL database because then we have mm -hmm. a pretty structured amount of data right here. So I'll say SQL DB. And in that case, to make this, as it scales and we get more and more requests, what we can do is we can split this database off into a master-slave architecture. So you have the master that does the writes, and we have some read replicas, the slaves, that will fetch the counts. So if I add this and say master-slave, and then we can add some read replicas to make it faster to fetch. Put that. And in that case, and then for the cache, in this case, since we're going to be computing all the aggregates and we want it to be fast, I assume we can just use Redis in this case because it will be an in-memory data store. So then we can just keep everything in memory instead of having to access the database because that will take much longer. So this cache okay. will get Redis because then it has data persistence in memory. So that will speed up the access. And mm -hmm. then what else do I want to do? I imagine so, by... see, before we before we optimize it, like super duper yeah. optimize it and, and try to make it faster, can you can you kind of walk me through yeah. my experience as a user of this service that computes the aggregate? How would I uh, how would you get code running on your machine to run in and fulfill this purpose? Yeah, so for the servers, I guess we could set up some, because you said we want it to be distributed. So I imagine we can set yeah. up some EC2 instances to run our application in actual code. And to start off, before we scale, we can set up just a single or a few instant EC2 instances. And let's say we have some servers run on instances and we have, let's say, a thousand requests per second to start off where things are light. So what we want to do as we as our application grows in usage was we want to profile or code execution to make sure that each of the individual parts are responding quickly so starting out mm -hmm. we just have the web service that calls these microservices to calculate the aggregate rate service and this is before we add any extra servers or scale anything and we profile to see how quickly it's running 
We do load tests to see how much is handling the load. Is the throughput good? So we just do those iteratively. And as the mm-hmm. number of requests grow, that's when we start to scale. So we'd want to add things like a load balancer. Because like you said, right now we have a thousand servers and each server has a bunch of instances. So we can imagine where we'd add a load balancer right in front of the web server. Let me move this over. So as it grows, we'd add more. Let me put this here. Yeah, so you can imagine we're just adding more servers and then we'd want to add a load balancer in the front. So then we can more properly distribute the requests across the servers as we scale and we add more. And then what else do we want to evaluate? So we have our EC2 instances running. Let's run an application. Did you mean for running actual application code? Did you mean like writing some data models in like let's say some pseudo language? Uh, no, just just this part about computing the average. Remember that that's kind of our yeah. main uh, main feature. So we're we're not the we're not the feature team. We are the monitoring or the DevOps team or okay. the production readiness team that needs to make sure that all of this is running and and delivered well. What what about uh, the health of these services? How would you how would you monitor that? Yeah, so monitoring the health of the services. Um, hmm, what could I do to you that? I know there is monitoring the health. What's the name of that? I think it's, I know we can use Zookeeper, Apache Zookeeper to inspect a lot of the web services. So Zookeeper will keep track of the API update, the IP will give us like pretty good metrics on that. So we can sort of dig into our application to figure out why there is a bottleneck. And if there's a bottleneck, Mm -hmm. we can sort of look at that server and then determine, do we need to vertically scale it or do we need to horizontally scale it? And it really depends on our use case for what we want to do. But essentially we run load tests, we profile the code, we use Zookeeper to keep track of the health of each individual service. We look for bottlenecks. If we find bottlenecks, we determine whether it's an issue with latency or an issue with load. If an issue with load, Mm -hmm. we determine if we want to vertically scale or horizontally scale the server. If it's an issue with latency, we figure out if we want to add an extra cache. Because right now I'm only talking about the cache in this layer between the database, but we can imagine we can have cache at different layers. So we have the cache within the API itself. So within application, we can have cache for the different services, cache on the database. So it really depends on what the bottleneck is if it's a latency issue or a throughput issue um how would you estimate how many instances of this service do you need so i guess starting off in the beginning like before we scaled so we have a single ec2 instance we have a single instances for each of these services and when we get our initial load of requests we would have metrics that would keep track over time of the average load per request, the average load in a day. And so just with a single instance of the service as we scale up to figure out how many instances we would need for that service by just so, looking at the health of the system and looking at the metrics to see when it starts to bot- buckle under load. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, would you be able to, uh, assuming all of these uh, API servers yeah. give you the response in I don't know, under 200 milliseconds. Okay. So let's say service API response. 